September is typically the toughest month for stocks, but here's what's not typical this time around. Folks, you know some of this. China-U.S. trade tensions so far are ramping up, not simmering down. The deadline came and went on Canada, signing on to NAFTA 2.0. Emerging markets are shuddering at this hour, with Argentina's peso collapsing in the wake of austerity programs. And back in the U.S., another government shutdown date looms. And do we or do we not have a fast-growing economy here in the U.S.? We have two widely disparate predictions for third-quarter GDP. The Atlanta Fed says 4.1 percent, whereas the New York Federal Reserve Bank sees it totally differently at 1.98 percent. Let's try and clear some of the smoke out of the air with Kevin Hassett. He is the White House Council of Economic Advisors. He's joining us in a Fox Business exclusive. Kevin, I know there's some rough yeah. weather coming your way. We wanted to get yeah. to you right at the top of the show. So let's Thanks. begin with this. There's something that hasn't been put up on our screen yet because there's no chart or picture to really show it. But it has the potential to neutralize some of the negatives and that is the unleashing of animal spirits. Consumer sure. confidence and spending are up. Unemployment at historic lows. Can you quantify the power of that for the U.S. economy right now? Right. You know, everything is firing on all cylinders, and, and you could probably hear the thunder and lightning rolling in. I, I feel like the priest in Caddyshack, right? The economy is so good, I'm just going to keep going. Uh, but it's really true that, that we've got GDP growth north of four. I think that the Atlanta Fed number is closer to what our number is than the New York Fed number because there's all this inventory rebuilding that has to happen in the third quarter. Uh, unemployment rate is about the lowest we've seen, you know, going back decades, and especially for minorities and, and so on. And so just about everything that we look at is doing about as good as it can. And, and I think that going forward, we should expect that to continue because the big story of the first half was capital spending. Mm -hmm. And the big story of the second half is going to be all those factories we built in the first half are going to start producing output, and that's going to make output go even higher. Okay. Uh, and I agree with you. Animal spirits, uh, and I've always said it's not something that, that John Maynard Keynes could actually quantify. He's the one who made it mm -hmm. up. Um, but it's this spontaneous optimism, so to speak, and it, right. it pertains to the economy. So then why do we have this big gap between the Atlanta Fed saying we're going to be gangbusters when it comes to third quarter right. GDP, and then, of course, the New York Fed, which has a different opinion. Can you do us a favor and give us what you expect for third quarter GDP? Right. So, so right now, I'm much closer to the Atlanta Fed. I, you know, I, I'm, make, I'm thinking like I, I try to keep people from getting out of hand in the White House and tend to <laughs> lowball. But, but I would say three and a half is looking like a pretty comfortable number right now. Three and and a half. Uh, it'll prove. But I would hope it would come in above that. And the reason why that we should really be quite comfortable that we'll get north of three is again that the shelves are empty. Uh, in, inventories collapsed in the second quarter because everybody was buying stuff left and right. And so there's a huge amount of momentum going into the third quarter. Okay, so when I look at that, and I, and I love it, I love that you say that you, you don't want to get people too excited within the White House because it's better to under-promise and then over-deliver. Oh, sure. Which we did, by the way, with our forecast. You go back and look last year, yeah. right? Like we were in ahead of our forecast. So. Well, anyway. President Obama, during his eight years, did at certain points surpass uh, more than 4%, uh, I believe three times. Uh, and yet yeah. after that, it was followed by some, some downward shifts. And, mm -hmm. and it sort of turned out to be a head fake. How do you avoid or can can you avoid that kind of building up of excitement and then disappointment? Yeah, absolutely we can. And, and it's really like the difference between what we're seeing right now and the sugar high that President Obama gave us. Do you remember things like cash for clunkers? There were these yeah. policies that were designed yeah. to throw cash at consumers so they go out and buy stuff. And, and, and you get a sugar high because you bought some Twinkies and then you ate them and then you feel kind of bad, right? But then after you do that, you don't want to eat for a while. Well, that's not what we're doing. What we're doing is that we've fixed a bunch of policies. We've made America a great place to locate businesses again. And they're locating their businesses here. And what we're going to see in the second half is not a collapse because we just had all those Twinkies, but rather an increase because the businesses are going to start producing output. And so there are new factories being formed every day, and those new factories are going to have output in the second half of the year. So that's the opposite of a sugar high, which I guess I don't know what the opposite of a sugar high is, but um, Kevin, whatever it is. <laughs> I never regretted seeing. having a Twinkie, so I really don't oh, know what you're talking about. That's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wait, but you regretted giving it to your three-year-old. <laughs> uh, well, exactly, yeah, as, as you're feeding it just to keep them quiet. Yeah. But but can I just say what I know I can hear at least some of our viewers saying, 
the tax cuts for everybody, including corporate mm -hmm. America, were a sugar high. Now, uh, and then uh, some would argue that cash for clunkers, I'm glad you brought that up. We haven't talked about that in a while, but it, it mm -hmm. may very well have been part of the reason that the great U.S. auto industry was saved. So where do we stand when we look at, in its entirety, the U.S. economy, but then throw in the trade tensions that we have, and the great concern, and it's already kind of showed up in the, in the great ISM August report that, that right. showed that Fantastic we were, what, numbers. at about 14-year um, highs uh, yes. that we got today for Back August? Back to 2004, that's right. But raw material costs are going up, and some would equate that to the problem of trade tensions and tariffs, and that that could slow things down. Well, what's going on right now is that we're working out great trade deals. You've seen that we've already formed a deal with Mexico. And, and something that hasn't really been covered a lot uh, is that as we were finalizing the deal with Mexico, both we and the Mexican negotiators were you know, agreeing to terms that we thought Canada would want to accept because we had been negotiating with them all year. We knew what they wanted. And so there could have been something that maybe was the best deal for the U.S. and Mexico, excluding Canada, but that's not what we agreed to with Mexico. We agreed to something that we think the Canadians should sign up with. And so we're very, very confident that the talks are going to go well this week and that we're going to have Canada on board relatively soon because the agreement with Mexico is really designed to be attractive to Canada. And so I think that trade tensions for sure were higher in the first half of the year because there's a lot of uncertainty because we promised we were going to improve the mm -hmm. trade deals, but people had to wait and see, could we deliver? Well, now we have delivered with Mexico and I think we're going to continue to deliver over the second half of the year. And it's another reason I think that markets should be optimistic that this, you know, four percentage growth can continue. Uh, I want to talk to you so much longer, but I don't want anybody to <laughs> get hit by lightning, you or the camera. Oh, we're safe so. right now. We're safe right now, I think. You've got at least another three or four minutes. <laughs> well, then let me just finish with one quick question here. Mm -hmm. Senator Chuck Schumer has said, and he's put out forth this bill, and I believe that there was another senator attached, and he mm -hmm. has wanted to make sure, he calls it the Measuring Real Income Growth Act, and he wants to be able to see exactly how the middle class is faring, and it will mm -hmm. meet out and partial out, or you know, parcel out different metrics on how the, the working class is doing when it comes to gross mm -hmm. domestic product. Would you support something like that? Oh, we absolutely. In fact, we're putting out a study in the next couple of days that does exactly that. And so I 100% I support uh, better data on, uh, data on how the middle class is doing, how working class is doing, because those are exactly the folks that are flourishing under uh, President Trump. I just wonder if, Pre if Senator Sumer is going to wonder whether he should have done that uh, if we do it, because it's going to make President Trump look awful good. Well, we shall see. And it's great to have yeah. you. Go get, it's great to go be here. get Thanks, inside Liz. before, before okay. the heavens unleash, we'll Kevin Hassett. Yes. Bye-bye. <laughs>